I'm, I'm upset with what I expect of my government and what I gave to this country as well as every other veteran. We expect equal treatment. We don't expect to come home and be homeless. We don't expect to come home and have our employers turn our backs, turn their backs on us when we want to have a seamless transition. We don't want to have a problem when we're needing of medical care. To go from the Department of Defense, Department of Army, and then told, well, go see your VA and give you none of the documentation that you need to prove that you have disabilities or play a game of let's hide the information. And then you have to go to the DAV, uh, the VFW, the American Legion, to fight your fight to secure the information and the documentation that should have been there for a seamless transition from active duty back to your civilian life. I didn't want to be here today, Congressman, and make a speech, but this is the only way I can okay. get my point across. No problem. And I, ask I didn't want to stop you. You make a good point. I, I think I'll you know, have some good arguments with you. And I, 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 I recently you. provided you with other correspondence that your offices. I, 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 I don't know if we did notify, but we should get something out of We can just increase better benefits appropriation by $3 billion.
Yes. Hi, Congressman. I'm Roxanne Pauline, and I'm with Northeastern Pennsylvania Operation Democracy. We're part of a little group that was out there to yeah. preach you with candles. Oh, great. Um, I want to say thank you very much for having these forums, and my experience with your office has been nothing but wonderful. I've managed to get a meeting with him whenever I, he could possibly meet, and everybody at his office has been absolutely wonderful. And I get correspondence from you regularly, so I'm very, very happy. So because if you just keep contacting that office, I'm positive they will get back to you. Um, I had a question that somebody asked me in Scranton tonight, and they wanted me to post this at the forum. Um, and it's regarding the war and a lot of issues that people were talking about, knowing that the Congress has the power of the purse. How far can Congress go to end the war by utilizing that? And what would happen if you could do that? Would the army be completely out of food? Would there be no bombs? Like, what would actually be the result of that? It depends, depends on our response of the president. The president could abandon the force. How realistic is it to actually invoke that? Well, I, I don't think that's realistic. Okay. This president is not evil. Our, our problem is that it became a political issue after Vietnam, and the two parties would argue, the, the Democratic Party would argue that the Congress was responsible in holding back funds. The Republican Party would argue that the Democratic Party were unpatriotic, did not support America, and cut and run. And that would probably have an influence on, on what party dominated American policy for the next 20 years. And I guess it all depends on whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. I am a Democrat, but at one time in my life I was a Republican. Uh, there are different parties today. Primarily, the President's party it doesn't feel for average people. They do a great job for the country club. They do a great job for Wall Street. They do a great job for billionaires. But they don't hear these problems. You know, I was on a plane with the President about six months ago. And we, we flew over part of Pennsylvania. We had a great discussion for an hour. But it was an, it, it was an interesting observation. That the, the president just didn't have any idea of average people. So I said, you know, why don't you take a break this weekend and come home with me? No, really. We won't tell anybody Saturday morning when I'm going out to uh, make a speech and do something jump in the car with me. <laughs> Nobody will know you're in Danny Coke. Who the hell would know the president's decision? And I'll say, come on down to the mini mark and fill the tank up with me where two or three people come up to me and tell me they, about their Medicare problems or their Medicaid problems or Social Security problems. And I said, come out to a couple meetings with me and meet real people. And of course he said, well, you know, I know what you're doing and all that. But the reality is, he's, he, he's completely poisoned from the American people. And, and when he does get to meet, quote, real Americans, most of them have a, a, a net worth like this check. You know, with how many spaces? Uh, Eleven spaces. Two and a half. Multi-billionaires. Well, those aren't representative American people. The guy I want him to meet is, is, is a veteran who can't get home. The guy I want him to meet is the person that has to go to the hospital and can't afford to go and is dying. That would be really dying. And, and that's the difference between the parties. It, it, it's a simple difference. It sounds like I'm very anti-president. I'm not. I'm not anti-Republican. I quite frankly have to tell you that financially, I don't have to be a Democrat. I've got enough economics that I'm not going to suffer. But I'm telling you, I don't like to live around extreme poverty.